Assassin's Creed Valhalla is probably one of the best games I've ever played this year. Let's get into it. And the main reason why I like this game so much is the fact that we're continuing with the modern day story. We're actually doing something with it. No more dicking around, finding all these fucking Isu artifacts and shit, and then it leading to absolutely nothing. I'm looking at you, Sass Creed Unity. I don't think if Stargo will bother searching the catacombs for Jermaine's body, the bones are going to be too damaged, too decayed. We're in the clear of this stage. The Viking storyline within the Animus actually has something to do with the modern day story, which then ties into uh, possibly further DLC and uh, later games. And I'm very interested in seeing what they do with it in the future. Before we delve more into the story, I want to talk about the unwillingness that Ubisoft seems to have when it comes to choosing whether or not they want a female or male protagonist. Uh, in this game, you get to choose whether or not you get to play as a female or a male, and the same thing within Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but the fact is, is that whether or not they want to admit it, one of them is going to be canonical. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it was the female version, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it is now the female version yet again. So if they really want a female protagonist, just do the female protagonist. I am completely fine with a female being our main protagonist. I'm saying protagonist a lot, aren't I? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with having the female main character. Yeah, how about that, huh? You choose a different word and you get a different <laughs> different result. How you, how you like the map? Cassandra was a great character and I can buy the fact that she was the main character within Assassin's Creed Odyssey. In this game, it kind of does a thing where it's like, oh, the animus is glitching, so we don't know what gender they are, so go ahead and choose, or you can just choose random, when they should just be like, yeah, this is female, we're completely fine with that. The main character within the modern day story is a female character, and I'm completely fine with that. Just double down on that fact, because you obviously want a more diverse cast, and that's completely fine. You can also tell that it's supposed to be a female character because the overabundance of dudes that want to fuck you for some reason. And the fact that there are some lines of dialogue that aren't as ambiguous as some other ones. Uh, for through the majority of the game, they do try to keep it as ambiguous as possible and don't say oh, her or him, they typically say Eivor or that person. Uh, but there are some lines of dialogue that do kind of slip through and they do say she, and that only further confirms the fact that they want a female protagonist with this game. But let's delve into the story already because this is by far the best Assassin's Creed story that has happened so far. Of course you play as Eivor. At a young age, he was attacked by a wolf and narrowly escaped with his life, therefore giving him the name Wolf Kiss. After that event, some years have passed and his brother Sigurd, has, wants to take over the throne but is unable to because his father uh, eventually pledges his allegiance to another clan, therefore forfeiting the land that he would rightfully own. Sigurd didn't take this news quite lightly and we decided to move off into England where we would settle over there and create a new camp called Raventhorpe. There are some things that I skimmed over, like um, how Sigurd brought back some assassins from his previous adventures, and that's how Eivor eventually gets his hidden blade. Once you settle on your new camp, you eventually get tasked with trying to recruit uh, different members within the land to try and eventually help you take over the entirety of England. That's the end goal to this game. Once you start doing that, you eventually develop a lot of bonds between uh, Eivor and some of the other characters you'll meet throughout the entirety of the game. A, lo a lot of characters will come and go. There's a, a lot of betrayal stories. There's uh, kings that fall, kings that rise. And I really feel like these uh, stories are really well done and they don't really overstay their welcome. And I think that's what makes this game so more unique to compared to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Because I felt like within Odyssey, it, everything just kind of dragged on. It really made me want to tear my hair out. And it, it just, it didn't feel like it flew very uh, naturally. But within this game, the, it really does feel like it flows real naturally. There's not too many missions that you have to do to, you, to the point where you feel like, oh, I have to do this and I can do that and blah, blah, blah. It's just three missions in particular 
uh, one one at the beginning, three in the middle, and then uh, eventually you'll do uh, like a climax towards the end. And I feel like that structure kind of moves things along. But because there's so much to do, it does feel like it can overstay its welcome. Looking at the map with the different territories, at first it seems manageable. There isn't too many. You start out with two and eventually increases the more you do and it keeps popping up. More and more start popping up and you start to go to different lands. And that's why it can feel like an overstay it's welcome because eventually it does get to a point where there's a lot of them. And uh, when you're looking at it, it just feels very overwhelming. But at least the characters are more interesting enough to, to a point where when you start the mission, you'll play through it the entire way. It is a little bit disappointing, though, that England is the main uh, focus of the game and not Norway, especially since, you know, Vikings. But... Um, I can understand what they're trying to do, and, but like because because England is such a uh, important part within the story. Once you look at Norway, it is extremely small. There's not much to do. There's a few like side things here and there. You can probably do a, a few side quests there as well. You can look at the beautiful landscape that they definitely worked hard on, and it is a little upsetting that we don't really go back to it all that often because there is a lot of detail to. Norway. Norway and it uh, looks absolutely gorgeous and you can definitely tell that they really love this landscape as well just based on hearing the music. Speaking of the score of this game, it's really well done. However, when you're in Norway, and this only really happens to you in Norway, um, that particular song that you were hearing uh, while we were looking at the landscape is extremely annoying uh, to a certain point because that's all you'll ever hear when you're in Norway. It doesn't seem to really have any other soundtracks other than that. So you'll be just kind of walking around traveling and you'll hear the chick go, ah, and it gets really annoying at a certain point and you're like okay we get it like this is really gorgeous looking but i'm literally trying to kill a fox right now and you're just playing that music typically when we think about sound design within games it usually just goes kind of unnoticed and that's typically what uh, game developers want they want mu background music that just kind of is static and it's just kind of there and you don't really notice it but the ones that are good are the ones you remember and the ones you notice so i feel like in this game everything is really well done the sound design is just amazing and you kind of just hear every little step that abor takes throughout the world and because this game is so atmospheric you tend to appreciate it a little bit more I could fall asleep to that music. But let's talk about the gameplay. Is it any good? It depends on what part we're talking about. And what I mean by that is that the parkour in this game is just... It's subpar. And I felt like that within Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Origin as well. That they've seemed to take a step down. If you ever played... Sadly enough, I am going to reference this. Assassin's Creed Unity. I mean, that image is still etched into my brain. Get out of my brain! The parkour, regardless of the gameplay and how, how it ran, like I know it's a terrible game, but the parkour in this game is actually really good. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying that this completely ruins the game. No one should ever play it. It's just because of that. I'm not really seeing anything like that. I am mostly just saying it is definitely a step down. It is a bit 
uh, just straightforward, and it could be just because of the time period. Honestly, I don't don't even know when parkour was first invented, or if it was really even an invention. It's just people just fucking doing fancy things while running around. But it is definitely a step down, and I I have felt like they they should bring it back or be a little bit more stylish with uh, their parkour because it's really the one thing we're gonna be visually looking at every single time as we're climbing up buildings and all of that. Now, when we talk about combat, on the other hand, that is just, it is fantastic. Definitely isn't the most flashy, but it is the most brutal. But there is one glaring flaw with the combat system, and then it has to do with the hitboxes in this game. Uh, taking Dark Souls, for example, the hitboxes in there are basically just the actual weapons themselves for both you and the enemies. So that way it feels fair, and if they were to attack you and they slightly miss, you're not going to be hit. But some reason in this game, I get hit by almost everything that seems like I shouldn't be getting hit, and sometimes I don't get hit by those things that I should get hit by. And it is really random as to why this is. This especially comes more noticeable when you're fighting any big enemies. Uh, one in particular, you're fighting a really big wolf uh, through part partway through the main storyline, and it is really hard to dodge any of the moves because you think it's just going to miss, and all of a sudden you get hit, even though you're right behind it and I swear like it, it sh honestly shouldn't even hit but it, it ends up hitting and it ends up killing you and you end up getting punished for it. It's not the correct way of creating difficulty. It is the incorrect way and it creates more frustration than it does anything else. Not only does the combat look cool but the armor looks awesome as well. Just look at my character. It pretty much just looks like a witcher and I absolutely love his, his design and I still haven't found like all the different types of armors and uh, weapons that you can even find throughout the game there's still a good amount of them there isn't as many as odyssey but i don't find that as a like a fault within the game because within odyssey there was just so many weapons to choose from it became overwhelming and then it also you would have so many different types of like the same weapon that you would just be tossing and uh, destroying just so you can make the the weapons that you do like better and even the ones that you do like, you're not able to progress throughout the entire game because you're going to have to ditch it for something that's even more powerful, but you don't want to ditch it because it looks really cool. In this game, it pretty much just fixes that entirely and makes it so every sing so all the small amount of weapons that they do have in this game are not only unique in design, but then if you do like that design, you can say, hey, I'm going to stick with this weapon, and then you can upgrade it and use it throughout the rest of the game, which is how they should have done it in Odyssey. And I congratulate Ubisoft for actually realizing that and being like, oh, okay, we've made a mistake. Let's fix it. You are able to use the Hidden Blade in this game, however, you're not able to use it in the way of Assassin's Creed 2 or Brotherhood, where it's a, a main weapon. You only use it for stealth killing, and that's fine. I completely fine with that. But you can also mess with it further within the settings so you can instantly kill your enemies instead of just leveling up and then hopefully that amount of damage will kill them because that's how they think it should be intended to play but honestly the past games it, i'm more used to it instant killing because you know it's a hidden blade once you get stabbed with it it's too late but that's what i love even further with this game is that you're able to customize it and tailor it to your own experience not only can you raise the difficulty but you can also raise the difficulty for stealth and combat and also mess with various other settings that it has throughout the game that um, will make it so you're more comfortable playing with the game you can turn off the blood if you want to you can turn off the nudity if you want to you can make it so you can insta kill with the hidden blade there's a lot of customization to this and i really appreciate games that do that in conclusion, this is probably one of the best experiences I've ever had with a Ubisoft game, and I'm really happy with what they've done here. Kind of makes me wonder what happened with Watch Dogs Legion.
Now, this isn't the perfect game. It still has its issues. It still has flaws. I've had several crashes on this game, but not nearly as many as Watch Dogs. I was never afraid of crashes in this game as I was with Watch Dogs. The story, the core gameplay, just uh, the all-around all great characters is why I had such great time with this, as well as the weapons and the armors that they had in here and the, the gorgeous views of uh, both England and Norway. It's all breathtaking and it is a real huge step forward and I cannot wait to see what Ubisoft has for us in the future. I'm going to give this game an 8 out of 10. It is not the most perfect game, but a great game nonetheless. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. I'm going to be coming out with more reviews in the future, and I'll see you guys next time.